Welcome to the show that's cool and fly too. A1 Forever Sports. I am he, Chris Tip Moore. Back with another segment episode to recap last night's Hawks versus Pelicans. And also to do just a little preview about the Milwaukee Bucks who are coming into town for Monday night's game, Monday night showdown. Definitely ready for that game. And also to help me with this analysis, I will have a special guest on today. Just in a few minutes, he'll be joining me here. But Hawks and Pelicans last night go into overtime. Hawks, you know, they pick up their first overtime win since April 1st of 2021. Uh, as for New Orleans, this was their third overtime loss, unfortunately, for them. But glad the Hawks picked up the win, 6-3 and three. going forward. We're going to see what we got, you know. So let's br- bring in my guests here. Bring in my guests. Got to bring in my guests. Well, this gentleman really doesn't even need an introduction at this point on the show, right? You know, Sports Illustrated on, Hawks beat writer, and the expert on wearing shoes with a suit. God, Pat Benson Jr. Welcome oh, no, to, welcome man. back, man. <laughs> no, you're way too kind. I appreciate it, though, and I appreciate you always having me on, Chris. Um, I love talking hoops with you. I always learn something new. And this is uh, this is really a great platform you've built. So, man, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you, man. I really, really appreciate that, man. Let's uh, let's jump into it, man. Last night's game, man. How much of a roller coaster was that, man, being for you? I know seeing it live in person. Man, it felt like I played in it just because the Hawks <laughs> got off to a good start. We're rolling. And the Pelicans just kept chipping away at that lead, kept chipping away. Then you look up and it's like, whoa, the Hawks are trailing with less than two minutes to go. So uh, that was crazy. DeJounte Murray's clutch shot, pushing it into overtime. It it was a roller coaster. And, man, uh, as you can see, I'm tired this morning. Right, right, man. Yeah, definitely was a roller coaster. I know it was um, crazy for me. I got in on it probably about the second quarter and mm-hmm. everything. And, um, but luckily for me, I was able to rewind to the beginning. Nice. But, no, what were, but, what uh, were some of your takeaways? Well, honestly, man, I feel like the first half was, you know, it's in a good half for the Hawks. And overall, you know, saying like three quarters was great for the Hawks. Mm-hmm. And then in the fourth quarter, but like you said, you still could not really like put away the Pelicans. You know, they kept chipping away, chipping away. The main factor uh, I thought was CJ, man. CJ getting hot. You, yeah, you can't, once he makes like one or two, you got to like blanket him. I mean, regardless, yeah. because when he gets going, he can't make shots. That really was what the factor was for me. And also on the rotation that mm-hmm. I took factor when, uh, you know, when Trey went out, I know uh started the fourth quarter, DeJounte, he came in. But I was looking at the rest of the lineup outside of DeJounte Murray. I was just noticing that uh, I felt like it really wasn't another guy who really was a real threat. So it was, I was looking at it and I felt like that was another reason that the Hawks was able to lose that lead like that. And then, like you said, look up. We don't even have the lead anymore. DeJounte had to really put his cape on and save mm-hmm. the day for the Hawks. So I'm just glad that it happened. I'm glad that um, – also, going into overtime, I was kind of like looking at the faces of the Pelicans, and I was like, I said, I think we may got it. I think yeah. maybe I think they may be spent. Like they was banking on not having to go to overtime. That's that was just my takeaway from it, though. No, you're right, and you know the Pelicans just played the Golden State Warriors, a, a the the skeleton version of the Golden State Warriors the night before, but still, you know, traveling, getting in late. That definitely helped the Hawks. But, man, a win's a win in an 82-game season. You don't get style points or anything, no moral victories. So just take the dub and move on. Yeah, I agree 100%. I agree on that. So, man, let's talk about – let's give a little love to CeCe, man. How great was CeCe last night? 21 points, 19 rebounds, four blocks. I think this is like the third time in his career he's had that stat line. I mean, like, CC was great last night, I think. What is your take on CC? How impressive was him? No, you hit the nail on the head, man. Got to give love to CC. Like, I was I was pretty critical of his play last season. He he regressed a lot statistically. But then again, he wasn't really right health, health-wise. So, I feel like whenever I'm critical of a player, I need to be just as loud about how 
great they are when they're performing well. And last night, man, he was a difference maker. And it makes you wonder, like, obviously not every night's going to be a career night, but if we can get 2020-2021 Clint back, then he could be the secret sauce to this team, you know, making a little bit of a – making some noise in the playoffs. So it was really cool to see Clint play well, and he was definitely feeling good after the game. You just touched on something very important, though, that uh, most people probably don't even realize. Clint Capella is healthy. Yeah. He is healthy. You know, I know he's been battling a few things, especially with the, with his legs. So mm -hmm. to see him healthy is great, man. And um, last night was a testament of that. And hopefully we see more of that going forward as well. So, you know, going on to my next question. So the Hawks now are six and three. Mm -hmm. um, this is their best start since 2016-17 season when they were seven and two, I believe. Wow. So yeah, so seven and two, but they finished 43 and 39. Okay. Does this Hawk roster, <laughs> does this Hawk roster, the way that it's constructed, do they win more than 43, right at 43 or under 43? I think they'll go over. I think I can't remember what the um preseason like uh projection was what the line was but it was around 43 ish 43 44 i want to say maybe 45 and yeah I, I would still take the over uh you know Dejounte murray is he really cleans up so much defensively and the team isn't solely dependent on trey have you know playing out of his mind every single night like he can have off games like he did against the new york knicks he, he obviously got injured as well and still uh, the Hawks are going to be okay. So, yeah, I'm I'm confident that the Hawks will be in the, the upper 40 win range. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, man, honestly, too, just uh, backtracking a little bit on last night's game, I feel like if it was just Trey without DeJounte, we lose that game. Is it safe to say that? Yeah, it is safe to say that, no doubt, just because, um, you know, it wasn't a great game offensively for the Hawks. And, um you know, just DeJounte obviously cleans up so much defensively, but then he provides a triple-double as well. Yeah, that's a game they, the Hawks lose last year. Like, I was trying to do some research this morning. The Hawks were one of the worst fourth-quarter teams last year. They were 0-1 in overtime. This year they're one of the best fourth-quarter teams, and they're obviously 1-0 in overtime. So I think it's just night and day the difference between – the two the two teams obviously a lot of work has to be done but this team's you know different compared to last year right i know Dejounte it was his 18th career triple double too something that i didn't even know yeah um i really did not know that and but also this was uh he has a little streak going on against the pelicans because that's back-to-back -back triple doubles against him because when he, <laughs> no, man, curves, love he did it yeah, oh, man, I love it. And he is so focused. Like, he doesn't even – it doesn't seem like he's that excited after great games. And, like, he he really just wants to win. And it's it's really refreshing to see. Wonderful to see. We need it down here, man. Mm -hmm. Trey and DeJounte, they're already going to break a lot of teammate-type records. They're mm -hmm. already the first pair of Hawk teammates to um, pretty much have a 30-10 and 10 and a 20-10 and 10 game in the same – you know, say game, and I believe that's like the 55th time in uh, NBA history it's been done. So, yeah, man. But, um, it, yeah, they're special. Yeah, I believe it's safe to say, you know, it was some questions coming into the, the season. Actually, you know, when, ever since we made the trade, it was been questions. I think it's safe to say that the Hawks made the right decision. What about you? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, they, uh, they're only going to get better. Like they've only played, uh, they've played less than 10 games together, not counting preseason. So they're only going to continue to improve once they gel and get to know each other more. What I'm glad is it doesn't seem like they're worried about stepping on each other's toes. Like whenever yeah. somebody's feeling it, they'll take the shot or they'll, you know, do what they need to do with the ball. So um, it's only going to improve from here. And it's already proven to be a success. So I'm really excited about what the future holds. Yes, sir. Me too, as well, man. I wanted to um, wanted to change gears a little bit and uh, move forward and preview a little bit of this Milwaukee Bucks matchup. Uh, it was like if you include preseason, it's going to be like the fourth time we've already seen Milwaukee. Like, what is it going to take for the Atlanta Hawks to finally crack the code that hasn't been cracked so far this NBA season? Yeah, man, that's a great question. I don't know. That's why Nate McMillan, his coaching staff, get paid the big bucks. Uh, All right. 
you know, they beat a they beat the Hawks narrowly last time, but that was without Chris Middleton. So I think that's that's always important to remember. So um, right now the Bucks are last I checked they're undefeated. I haven't checked last night's score. Yeah, they're nine and zero. Okay, nine and zero. Yeah, so right now they're the gold standard, and uh, I think it's an excellent early season test. So um, so we'll find out. I guess it really just comes down to uh, trying to stop Giannis, hoping Drew Holiday doesn't light us up again because he went off too uh, a couple weeks ago when they yeah. lost. Yeah, yeah, I was like, and that was a major factor for me, but. Drew Holiday, ever since he's joined the Milwaukee Bucks, has kind of been like that factor. I always look and I'd be like, okay, let me see how good of a night Drew has. Because yeah. Drew, Middleton, and Giannis are all going off. You see that it's hard to stop that. It really is. Like, and also, too, you gotta you gotta limit putting them at the foul line. 29 to 15. That was the foul, you know, that, that was the free throw percentage from last time. It, it seems like you know. Don't get me wrong. I know Giannis is going to get some calls, but it yeah. just gets ridiculous sometimes. I think yeah. my personal opinion, you know, and uh, also what I think the bench points too was a difference as well. So we're going to have to get a little bit more from the bench, especially, you know, Middleton playing this game. It's going to be tough, but I feel better that we're going to be at home, you know, so hopefully, you know, it's in the hometown crowd, go ahead and sell out that arena again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we handle business, man. I think so, man. And you hit on something important was the fans, man. I was really encouraged last night because um, it was a really good crowd. And I was expecting it to be pretty, you know, half empty because Georgia was playing Tennessee, Alabama, LSU. You know, they're in the World Series. They were up against a lot of competition. And still, a good crowd came out, man. Atlanta is a basketball city. They just need a product to cheer for. And, always i've yeah. always said that exactly always. and hopefully i think this this might be it yeah i mean i hey i'm not gonna lie to you the boys are looking good i know you know it's been a, little, a few bumps you know here and there which you know it's gonna be all right they're still working it out i appreciate the fact that like you said Dejounte, he brings something different like trey and Dejounte are night and day and that's mm -hmm. really what you want you know, so Trey Young is, is number one for me. You know, so yeah. it's, gonna, it's gonna be there. But I can't sit up here and lie to you, man. DeJounte has grown on me uh like so much. I mean, I, I checked him out, of course, in San Antonio, but just you know, so what he's bringing to the Hawks, man. I really appreciate it. You know, so just with me being a fan and everything, I really appreciate more on the defensive end than anywhere else, though. For me. If you're buying a jersey today, whose jersey are you buying? Trey, DeJounte, uh, which way are you going? Well, to be honest with you, for me, it, I'm going to do uh, DeJounte only because I have, like, two Trey Youngs and, nice, like, nice. shirts and everything. So I got a lot of Trey Young gear, like, honestly. You got to diversify. Yeah, yeah, man. So, honestly, man, yeah, I think DeJounte, coming into the season, I, I said to myself personally, and I'll put it out there, I was like, well, he's going to have to, you know, some pretty much earn – earn his earn his keep around here and he's definitely already done it he ain't take long at all so he's definitely got definitely um good in my book man for sure yeah he, it didn't take long for him to endear himself to fans and those DeJounte jerseys are going to be flying off the shelves and man we're, we're lucky to have two two all-stars two great players and like you said they're night and day they're yin and they're yang they're thunder they're lightning mm -hmm. and, and it, it works out really well it really does and there, I know um, I don't want to get lost in the DeJounte and, you know, I'm saying Trey Love. I mean, it's kind of kind of easy to. Yeah. But let's just be honest. One of the guys who is benefiting from these two the most, I believe, is recently signed De uh, DeAndre Hunter. Mm -hmm. Man, his three point percentage, I believe, is up, man. He, he makes more than he misses If he, like, this year. He's really worked on it. And man, he that jab step, hey, that jab step, man, he, he, that right there, that's a killer for him. He's yeah, absolutely. He's an like you said, he's an underrated shooter. He is, uh, he is one of our better shooters. And I guess just because he's so low key and so quiet, I think people often forget <clears throat> that he that he does space the floor as well, and he can score at all three levels. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I really like the deal he was signed to. You hit on the contract extension he recently signed. Yes. I think that's I think that's a very fair deal for both parties. Right. So, um, you know, 
the future is bright for Hunter. As long as he's healthy and he stays on the court, he's going to really be huge for the Hawks. Yes, man. I love having him and DeJounte on the floor together, mm -hmm. especially on the defensive end, man. Like, and then a healthy CC, you can tell because last year, I don't believe I seen CC getting up for as many blocks as, you know, and just getting up period as much as he has. Like mm -hmm. I said, I mean, you've been critical. I've been critical. Anyone who's watching this who's a Hawks fan, I'm pretty sure has been very critical. Yeah. Of the fella. And, you know, we got to give him his love because, you know, so he definitely uh, earned that last night. And also just the entire Hawks, you know, saying uh, roster, you know, of the young guys coming in. Jalen did good. I think he had about 11 points, you know, showed some confidence in himself. And uh, that's great to see because we've been waiting to see Jalen Johnson. I want to see a little bit more A.J. Griffin. I know he got to work on the defensive end, and I know that's why he's not really playing like that. But he'll come along too, man. This this team is going to be this team is going to be fine. I believe they're going to be fine. Yeah, absolutely. And they're only going to get better with time. They just need a little bit more. They just need some reps. Right. That's all. So I have, of course, you know, you're the shoe uh shoe expert and everything, man. So I got a couple of shoe questions for you. Let's do it. Just in your experience, man, how is it? Just interviewing guys like Steph Curry, you know, Trey Young, Dame Lillard, just just talking about shoes, man. Oh, man, it's awesome. I, uh, you know, I'm a fan first and reporter second. So I, uh, you know, it, it always is super exciting. They're all they've all been really cool dudes to speak with. And uh, yeah, I mean, just can't say enough good things about them. They are uh, very kind, very um very uh generous with their time just to make time for me like you build me up like i'm just a dude with an internet connection i just blog a little bit like i'm i'm really nobody and for them to take time and be be courteous and speak with me it, it's always a pleasure hey man that's what it's all about man i'm glad that you know good guys like that who are yeah. you know in the spotlight and everything still are you know good guys to be able to give time back to you know guys like yourself yeah. And uh, hopefully one day, guys like me. Oh, it, will be. it will be. I'm confident about that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So another question. So we're not going to talk about the situation. You know, that that is what it is. I just want to know your opinion on how impactful it will be to not have Kyrie Irving's shoes on the shelves. Yeah. Yeah, man, you know, uh, obviously they're important, like societal and like, you know, uh, conversations to be had about that. But like on a less serious note on the shoes, this is a big deal in the, in the sneaker world because uh, Kyrie's signature line had become one of the most popular on for Nike. It was the most popular shoe. Uh, his latest model was for in the WNBA. Kids love it. So it's a major move from Nike to uh, cut ties with Irving. And, you know, it looks like they're going to move pretty seamlessly on to Ja Morant. I'm guessing, what I, you know, as you know, they make these shoes and they design them a couple of years in advance. Mm -hmm. So I guess whatever would have been Kyrie's 10th model is probably going to be Ja Morant's first or something like that. Mm -hmm. So pretty, I think it's going to be a pretty smooth transition, but you hate to see it go up in flames, man. They really uh, had something special. And uh, like you said, it is what it is. Yeah, man. Um... It's pretty much what I know. I have a couple of pair of Kyrie's myself. Um, of course, you know, trays and everything, but just Kyrie's. I got a couple pair. I have plenty of my buddies who wear Kyrie's and then just going out to hoop, period, man. I always see Kyrie shoes out there. So, like, you know, in the sneaker world, Kanye and Kyrie in the past week, I mean, right. lifestyle and basketball just took two major hits. And right. uh, it just seems like we're in a very – like historic time like sometimes I, I always butcher the quote but I think it was maybe Stalin who said it it was like sometimes you can go decades without history but then sometimes decades happen within weeks and it seems like right. since 2020 man it's been it's been nothing but major uh historical impacts both on like grand scale and even some of the small sneakers it just seems like things are really uh, it's a very tumultuous time right I'm interested to see going forward. I know we're both going to have to wait and see for this, but I'm waiting to see like with this happening. So what athlete shoes are going to like rise now, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much take on the space that's, that's occupied well, the space that's pretty much vacant of the Kyrie Irving shoes. Now I'm really interested to see like, like, like who's, who stopped yeah. rise now. 
It, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know. Right now, Nike, st- Nike and Air Jordan are still king. I saw a stat recently that it was like 75, 80 percent of the NBA wears Nike or Air Jordan. So that, that's uh, that's a big challenge for Adidas to overcome. I really like Trey Young's new shoes. They're performance beasts, but Adidas and Puma and Under Armour, they all have their work work cut out for them. Also, I want to come back to my quote that I butchered. It's Vladimir Lenin who said, there are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen. And Uh, it seems like that's been nonstop for the past two years. So anyway, I just want to correct that. Hey, man, no problem, no problem. Uh, You're definitely correct about that, man. There's definitely been a lot going on, a lot transpiring. But, you know, hopefully everything will work itself out. Same thing with these Atlanta Hawks. I'm really, uh, really excited, man. And it's crazy, man, coming to this game. I understand that, you know, the Bucks are, like you said, the gold standard right now. But I, mm-hmm. I, I believe we can do it, man. I believe we can go ahead and give the Bucks their first loss and also um, put some more spotlight on this new Atlanta Hawks team. Yeah, I think so, man. I think so. I think this team's going to make some noise in the playoffs. And it's – uh Last night was their biggest win of the season for sure. It was the first time they had beaten a team with a winning record. So I'm going to build from there. Yes, yes, definitely. So that's one big. And then, like I said, learn from the mistakes too. Mm-hmm. You know, if you for one thing, if you get the bucks down, keep them down because you know how great they are and they can be. But Absolutely. yes, sir. Thank you so very much, Pat, for coming on. As always, talking some hoops with me, some Atlanta Hawks and some shoes, man. I really appreciate everything that you're doing. And especially that your time that you take out for me. Oh man, it's my pleasure, pleasure, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. Keep putting in that work, and uh, I just love watching what you're doing and putting on the basketball world. So we'll we'll talk again soon. Oh, you already know, man. Peace and blessings to you, man. I'll be at you in a minute. Sounds good, man. All right, now take care of yourself. That was Sports Illustrated and Hawks beat writer Pat Benson Jr. The shoe and suit God. Glad um, he was able to spend just a few minutes of his time with me, talk some sports, you know, Atlanta Hawks sports, of course, Atlanta Hawks basketball, uh, shoes, of course, as well. Didn't want to touch too much on that uh, situation was going on with Kyrie, but just wanted to talk about the impact of his shoes not being on the shelf. Thank you guys. Peace and blessings to you all. I appreciate you guys for watching anything that I do. And shoot, man, why settle for less? We can have more with the vision. Be generational because it's always time to be A1 Forever Sports, the show that's cool and fly too. Chris Tip Moore. Until next time, y'all, go Hawks, go Falcons as well, and I'll holler. Cooler and I'm flying to jam. Cooler.